Hello everyone, thank you for joining today. And in this session, we are going to talk about wireless security for Wi-Fi 6E. So what do we have, right? With Wi-Fi 6E, we have introduced WPA3 as compulsory, as necessary to be used. And what does WPA3 has? Let's get into it and understand what it is. So we know about on-wire attacks. On-wire attacks, and we have taken care of it throughout many years, from starting with .1x authentication plus map, auth map plus .1x authentication, and now we have started looking into FirstSec. How can we have our DNA center and eyes integrated along with our wireless controllers? So the policies posture can be applied according to the right type of device. Moving into non 802.11 interferers, and especially we know with 2.4 gigahertz, right? Bluetooth radar, um, Bluetooth and microwave, radar and RF jammers. Yes, we have seen it, and that's the reason we know why 6C is important with 59 non-overlapping channels and real-world use of 80 megahertz is possible and very promising. But moving on to on-air attacks, rogue, yeah, it is, it is still going to be the same. We can't control or limit it like considering in a multi-tenant facility or even working from home. You can see it, but you can't do anything apart from choosing the right signal. Unfortunately, we have wireless controller to do that work with our app. We are going to talk about Honeypot denial of service attack tracking tool to understand what it is and how it can be used. So in rogue detection, before we used to having in our 9120, 9130, RFA6 was a dedicated required to continue to scan channels. With 9136, we have introduced a scanning radio, which is a separate radio to continue to monitor your wireless network, while your 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz radios continue to serve clients and they are supposed to do to serve clients instead of going off channel scanning. And rogue detection has been taken care of in many different forms, right? As your managed AP, another rogue AP, a different SSID or WLAN name shows up and we can see it. And we create those rules into our controllers where it can highlight whether it's friendly, or that we haven't figured it out, no rules has been assigned to it, unassigned or malicious. If somebody is broadcasting similar SSID as us, it should show up in malicious. And that's where we need to put our focus. But all that can work together with our Cisco DNA Center with integration of CMX or DNA spaces. And we can see that. What's a denial of service attack? Especially that is where we need to be cautious, right? De-authentication, disassociation, continuous trying to target our clients. And that's where we have protected management frames introduced more than a few years back. But most of the times, as we know, we continue to have our own SSIDs that we have tested and it is working why to make that change, right? Now with, it is with WPA3, we are going to have the PMF enabled and required. Otherwise, your SSID won't be broadcasting 6K. So that's how we take actions with WPA3, one of the feature. Now let's talk about the roads, right? Rogue's honeypot, right? That's where somebody else, apart from our environment, 
and there is another radio broadcasting in SSID, as we can see in our example as orange. And our clients will go ahead and connect to it. Like think about it, lawyer's office, doctor's office, even universities. And there are many other places that I have seen it broadcasting open SSID and clients connect to it. So what can we do regarding it with WPA3 we introduced called OWE, Opportunistic Wireless Encryption. Uh, opportunistic Wireless Encryption. And that helps to protect our clients. Moving on, and how does it protect? We will talk in a second. Tracking tool, just Google it, right? What is the WPA2 passphrase cracking tools? And you will see a lot of different things. We can go ahead and crack WPA easily, WPA password, anything, and WEP, just think about it. Even with the WPA2 password can be cracked. And there are not even costly devices required. There are dictionary attacks introduced. So what can be done with it, right? And that's where we have introduced SAE in WPA3. And SAE stands for Simultaneous Authentication of API. And it helps us to go ahead and cryptograph from both sides, client, that is a wireless client, and an access point. And that's where they continue to make sure that, hey, or four-way handshake is being done and that cryptographic information has been confirmed and commented from both sides. So it helps us to avoid that. So the combination of WPA3 is everything, PMF, SAE, hash to element for encryption of passphrase or password or personal SSID or opportunistic wireless encryption, protecting us with the PMF, protected management frames from, from attacks of denial of service. So that's where we see the importance of the WPA3 and no backward compatibility. Let's not forget that. So all your old barcode scanners or old devices won't be able to connect. So no compromise on security. Thank you. And next time we will talk about more detail regarding what is SAE, what is OWE, and how do they function along with our dot one x SHA256 encryption required. And the last is we will definitely allow to talk about Wi-Fi 6C design, right? What should we consider, right?